Oh, I press the shoot now. Okay, let's see. Let's try. What? You stupid! In a world full of darkness, the man with the candle is an easy target. And in this case, the man with the candle is Fazizan's Guts and Black Powder, another zombie game to join the creatively bankrupt and commercially dying zombie subgenre of Roblox. But Guts and Black Powder is creatively different, you see. It's not your typical zombie game. There isn't any soulless grind, you don't have to play as a helpless zombie, and the game actually gives you something interesting to do other than just shoot zombies. For some peculiar reason, people seem to be eating this game up, saying that it's one of the best Roblox zombie games out there. By which which, if you've seen my recent video, the bar isn't exactly set very high right now. But in all seriousness, Guts and Black Powder is by no means a bad game. If anything, I'm glad that people are still willing to take risky ideas and go with them when it comes to Roblox zombie games, even if the risk doesn't always seem to pay off. However, another reason why I feel so inclined to talk about Guts and Black Powder is because, you see, two months ago I made a video on the Roblox Left 4 Dead copy, Left to Die, in which I talked about several problems with the game. That of my two most blaring were the sluggish development and lack of an I original identity. Shortly after I made that video, Left to Die was cancelled, and the group's development efforts began to solely focus on Guts and Black Powder. Now, Guts and Black Powder seem to serve as an answer to a lot of the concerns previously brought up in the face of Left to Die. Game not original enough? Said in Napoleonic times. Game not get enough updates? Well, this time the game devs are actually motivated, so that should fix it. Guts and Black Powder's scope is a lot smaller than Left to Die. There's no promise to deliver five map long campaigns and each map mode is kind of self-contained, though the fans seem to not think so. However, the game is also hamstrung with some issues, one of which being a concern that the game is just a concept without direction or longevity in mind, bound to repeat the fate of Left to Die, combined with the issues that Blood and Iron already has under its belt. Anyways, Guts and Black Powder takes place in Napoleonic times during a zombie infection slash outbreak. The classes and gun mechanics are akin to that of Blood and Iron, as well as one of the maps, which is just Hugomont, or however the fuck you say it. The Hugomont map is pure survival, which is what the game originally started out as, and also the reason why I initially avoided talking about the game back then, because there just wasn't enough content. But now that there's actually decent substance in the form of these two new maps, which are objective maps, something that I and a lot of other players love seeing in zombie games, especially when you've already play like a more billion zombies and you're just bored of mindless shooting. I figured I'd talk about it. Ever wonder why Call of Duty Zombies just kept getting more and more bad shit crazy as the series went on? That's why. This is coming from somebody who's a prestige master in Black Ops 4, by the way. I, I apologize, I digress. The first objective map to be included in is Vardohus Fortress, which I'm assuming takes place in Norway because that's where the real life version of it is. Your group starts out inside the fortress itself and you're tasked with loading a cannon in order to blow open an iron door, which is admittedly good utilization of the Napoleonic setting, and it also teaches players about the cannon that will be helpful later. After grabbing the shovels from behind the door and activating the rocket outside of the house, you'll then have to shovel through some snow in order to clear a path to the church, which can be rather intense due to the constant zombies flowing in and grabbing people, but it's fine. You can also hit the zombies with the shovel, which is a nice touch, although it's not as effective as the internet would lead you to believe. After this little endeavor, you make your way to the church, which you're only there for like two seconds because all you have to do here is just dig the grave and steal a key to the wooden door. I mean, it's not even a metal gate or anything, it's literally a wooden door, like, why can't you just fucking break it like every other door in Blood and Iron, like, what the actual fuck? Anyways, once you get to the final stretch, you just have to climb to the top of the White House, that of which the fucking stairs are not at all OSHA standard, and finally, escaping on a ship. Guts and Black Powder is very much a game of contrast, with both good and aspects pulling it both ways. I mean, on the plus side, it's a unique game that we haven't seen quite before on Roblox, as well as the fact that it uses a lot of familiar elements from Blood and Iron. And with Blood and Iron already being an established, strong fan base, it definitely helps with bringing in new players. The dark and ominous nights coupled with burning fire all around is a nice sharp contrast to the typical stuff you'd see in a Blood and Iron map, only missing some background SFX to really tie the atmosphere together. The game is unique and actually looks like they put effort into it, instead of making a dumb game that's easy to understand to get easy and quick clicks from dumb children. And I know a lot of games are like this, but in the current state of Roblox zombie genre, simple baby steps like this make you feel like you fucking deserve a medal. And for the newest map added, I'd have to say that the game's true colors start blossoming. While the first map seems to have taken place in the middle of fucking nowhere, the new map is actually in a city. The map is a lot larger and has you constantly moving forward. 
kind of like how Left to Die did originally. There's also named characters that appear in this map, and it's pretty cool to see. The map is large and has a decent amount of detail compared to the first. The only issues with it is the lack of character that it has to it, but that's always subjective, I suppose. I just believe that a game that's trying to seem all bleak and stuff could really use some core map design in terms of world building, but that's it really. Getting back to core mechanics, the zombies actually feel threatening and your urge to keep moving forwards in order to survive. Being altruistic and getting kills isn't exactly rewarded whatsoever, which is kind of a blessing and a curse for this game, but let's not think that. Kids don't care, right? The main goal is survival, and it's up to whether or not your teammates are willing to work with you if you're going to obtain that goal or not. However, the bit where the game starts to really unravel is through the blood and iron problems. As learned through the undead coming, if you're bringing aspects from another game, you're likely to bring those same problems along with it, and thus, the blood and iron problems. Guts and black powder still somewhat present the same problem. Blood and iron are held to the design's issue, but at least gut and black powder deliver an experience that's actually original to the game. Due to the guns in this game being a single shot front loading type deal, reloading obviously takes a long time, and with several zombies swarming you, you've basically got to adapt to learn on how to depend on your sword, with several people pleading for their teammates to use their sword as if it was their primary in order to ensure a better odds at survival. And this would it entirely be a problem. In fact, I used to play the absolute shit out of a game like this where swords were primaries and guns were secondaries, but here's the kicker here, the sword system is just as blind as blood and iron. As part from some aesthetic damage effects that can just be obtained from using a gun, the sword system doesn't feel rewarding too much, it just feels like I'm spam clicking constantly. And I mean, I'm not saying that there needs to be glory kills or anything, but I'd rather there be some more amusing sound effects or something. I mean, even getting a headshot doesn't seem rewarding in the slightest. Then again, there isn't exactly a point system or anything like I said earlier, so... Anyways, another part of Blood and Iron issue is the player base. I mean, I used to play a lot of Blood and Iron back in the day, and if things were toxic back then, I can't imagine how toxic that they are now. Dust and Black Powder surprisingly does have a pretty concrete audience. It isn't just a bunch of 4 year olds who can't afford the real thing. I think the Prionic role players and Blood and Iron players make up majority of the community, which you know, isn't always a good thing, because sometimes these people take things a little too far. But you don't get to choose your fans, so I'm content. Now, this isn't exactly the game's direct fault, but I definitely can't help but notice that players in this game are a lot more complainy in chat than you'd expect. Thanks for adding vote kick though, Fizzuzin. I mean, gameplay gripes aside, Guts and Black Powder is a game that I'd describe as something more solid than spectacular. It's a competent mid-lister game in the stand of other games of its type. It's surely not bad, but it's nothing that a lot of people would find themselves playing over and over again for hours on end grinding. However, it does seem to be gathering a significant following, me included. It's definitely a breakaway from the shameless reason to die copying and pacing that seems to be taking the spotlight lately, and this game leaves a lot of possibility for improvement through potential future updates. I think Gods and Black Powder does have potential for longevity. It's pretty easy for us to make new content for it. I mean, our builders made a new map in pretty much a day. I think we can monetize it somewhat like we have already with cosmetic packs and some other ideas we have. I do hate keeping up with the treadmill work with people constantly finding bugs or glitches that I have to fix. Honestly, it's much less stressful than it was for Left to Die for years. Hey guys, I'm Brady and thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and share it because I cover niche topics in my videos, basically rely on shares to get out there because of that. Anyways, love you. Bye. <laughs>